Hey there, YouTubers. Unboxing videos, huh? So this should be, uh, I guess I don't need the knife here. This should be a motherboard. Another, uh, I don't know if it's an A520, B550, I can't remember. Okay. A520M. And this one's by Osrock. So I've gotten uh, quite a few of these ITX motherboards. Uh, mainly, you know, because I travel all the time. And these are much easier to carry. Uh, I don't bring a whole case. I, you know, bring a carry-on bag and put three or four boxes of these in there. Well, that's my goal. At least I've only done a few at a time. But this will support uh, third-gen AMD Ryzen desktops and um, the fourth-gen, supposedly, whenever that comes out. Socket AM4, like I said, A520, NVMe SSD ready. Let's go ahead and look at the back before I get into it. Now, I've gotten um, two of the ASRock 10th gen Intel ones of these a B460M and the Z490M. And, you know, they're not bad. Could they be better? Of course. Everything could be better, right? But, uh, you know, I kind of expect the same thing here, maybe. A power, phase design with DigiPower, Dr. Moss, dual band, polychrome RGB. So this will have the addressable, yeah, there it is, RG LEDs on here. Addressable RGB LEDs. Uh, which I've used on the wife's gaming computer with a light bar. I really I like the way that turned out. So dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. It had no problems with the other two, so uh, it definitely connects. Uh, let's see what else before we get into it. There it says 3000, 4000 series. Da 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 da. Two dims. We'll take a look at that. PCI Express 3.0 by 16. So there are some of these that are uh, 4.0, at least in the uh, micro ATX. I don't know if you're going to find one in the ITX. I'll probably get one of those on the channel. And I've got a new Ryzen uh, chip coming in, so we'll try that out. And let's just get it open at this point. So, I.O. shield antennas, two of those, SATA power cables, or not SATA power cables, sorry, SATA data cables, basically. Then we've got a installation disc. I never use these, by the way, I'm always getting it off the internet. Uh, we'll take a look at this, obviously. And where's the other page? Probably right after it. And this in detail. So let's get the motherboard out. Now the weather is not too great outside. I, I actually wanted to do this outside in the sunlight. All right, folks, got out of the box. Let's get into uh, taking a look at this thing. I think I'm going to lift it up so we can get closer. So here obviously is where the CPU is going to go. We talked about Ryzen 3000, 4000. This is uh, important to, you know, pull this out, put your CPU in, and then, so you're going to put it in, pull this back like that, put the CPU in, make sure it's seated nice and flush, and then put that guy back in to lock it down. Mounts that come with it are, you know, for certain types of CPU coolers. Uh, has a mounting plate on the back. Sometimes you'll find that you need the plate uh, But you don't need these brackets or you'll need the, the plate and the bracket to do your CPU cooler installation This you know set up for a Wraith cooler um, Over here we have two slots for DDR4 RAM and a 288 pin now from what I've seen, you know, you obviously can go to the uh, manufacturer's website and find out 
compatible RAM. I get a lot of questions, you know, which RAM I suggest. That's where I would send you because I could suggest something and it may not work with this motherboard, right? So you got to do your homework. Um, if you ask me nicely, I'll, I'll look something up to see, you know, if it's on there. But uh, it's, it's something, you know, that you should be able to hopefully do. But if not, hey, reach out to me and I'll, I'll try and help. So this is going to come from your power supply. This is the 24-pin uh, uh, connector here from the PSU. You've got four SATA, three connectors here for uh, data. This is the USB 3.0 that comes from your case, your CPU uh, case, all right? And, uh, you know, sometimes cases don't have these, so that's a, always a possibility. You may just have USB 2.0 on there. Sometimes you'll have two USB 3.0s, and, and this motherboard doesn't support having uh, more than one. So, hard to see. One of these is going to be uh, USB, and the other is going to be your front panel connector. So let's go ahead and uh, bring that up close. You guys will be able to see, hopefully, whatever that text reads right there, which yours truly cannot read. Um, oops. All right, so now that I look at it, um, usually, you know, when you see the case headers, they'll have a pin on the top missing, and it's oriented that way. So you'll have... The first two pins on the top row are for your HDD. Then you have your power switch, or the next two. HDD on the bottom row for the first two, and then the reset switch will be the next two, okay? So that leaves this to be the USB 2.0. Fan header here. So it looks like there's two case fan headers, okay? One here. One here, and then the CPU cooler, one right there. Let's see, we've got everything there. M.2, so this has got a heat sink on it, hopefully to you know keep it cooler. You will remove, looks like you have to take out both of these screws, and then uh, might as well do that, right? All right, so we're going to take these out just because see what's underneath here usually there's like a piece of uh, film I would assume it's made out of plastic with some adhesive underneath it and it's definitely you know makes these look nicer having this uh, heat shield over them but it does add to the amount of work that you have to do for an installation all right so there you go. Here's your M.2 slot in it. Like it said, will support NVMe M.2 and most likely uh, SATA M.2. Now, there is no screw here, so you could go without the heat shield and put it in here. And then uh, if you have a spare screw sitting around for an M.2, put it in there. Otherwise, you'll put your M.2 in and put the uh, heat sink back over top of it. All right, so... This should be the uh, PC speaker if you have one with your case. Sometimes people don't. HD audio back here. Now, this uh, motherboard has a 1x8. So uh, sometimes, you know, you'll see 1x4, 1x8, 1x8 plus a 1x4. And I've never been able to get one, but supposedly there's a 1x8 plus a 1x8. CMOS battery. So... This is kind of an important thing to know where it is and what it does. If you ever find yourself where you decided to try and overclock your RAM and the computer um, after you rebooted it, or excuse me, after you exited BIOS, the computer would uh, go to a black screen. And after you know quite a few minutes, it basically stayed on that black screen. You may have to go in here and disconnect this, which stops the... Uh, the current from flowing in here and once that is detached for say up to 30 seconds 
uh, the BIOS gets reset. So you'll go back in, your RAM will be, say, let's say 2133 megahertz versus the overclocked speed that you wanted. And then you will, uh, you know, have to change the RAM speed to a speed that's stable, all right? So addressable uh, RGB on here, and I believe that's about all worth uh, really noting. So let's look at this side here. I keep hitting my camera stand. The only problem with this gooseneck camera stand is it's so, so easy to bang. All right, so this motherboard looks a little crooked. As you can see, this gap. Um, ASRock doesn't always have the best quality. And that is definitely, uh, you know, there should be an even gap from the bottom all the way to the top. But if it works, it works. Hey. So obviously the antenna's for the Wi-Fi. You've got headphone, microphone, and uh, what is it, line out? Ethernet. A uh, This one looks like a special USB. Probably 3.2. Let me double check. All right, so yeah, USB 3.2. And it's a Type-A. Now underneath it is USB 3.2 Type-C. All right. So this is nice for me because my phones, um, the one I'm using right now to record this, 4K 60 FPS one, uh, has a Type-C connector. So it's always good for transferring the data to the motherboard. USB 2.0. And these are additional USB 3.2s Type A, all right? Gen 1 Type A. Over here, we've got a Display Port and HDMI. So, um, depending on which Ryzen chip you buy, you may or may not be able to use those uh, displays, right? So, if I put my 3200G in there, I'll be able to get that to work without a graphics card. If I end up with my 39X, it will not work. So there you go, folks. There is your unboxing and overview of the ASRock A520M-ITX slash AC. Uh, I'd love to hear everyone's comments about this motherboard if you've bought it or you're considering it. And uh, I'll have some uh, video games posted see how it does. Hopefully everything will go good. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.